Now then, this is a catch-up video really. Uh, I've been having a conversation with Boots Owen. Um, he uploaded a video about testing 12 volt batteries with a homemade drop tester um, that he'd read about in a book. And in that video he referenced my uh, original uh, drop tester video for 2 volt cells which was probably a couple of months ago now. Anyway, he asked me to view that video and make a comment, which I duly did, quite in depth. And in our subsequent conversations, one or two things have, um, have come to light and therefore I'd like to cover them. Um, just here there's a big Trojan battery and I've kept that one to one side for a video about that particular cell and so therefore this his video is really a catalyst for what follows so thanks to him for that now let's dig in and I'll show you one or two things that he alluded to in that video now one of the first things he mentioned was about sealed cells now this is a gel battery type thing I've been in here before obviously okay so those tops are just glued on and as soon as you get underneath as you see they will pop off and there are the seals the valves as it were and once you lift those off you can actually put electrolyte down there because what happens with these batteries is they get constantly trickle charged and eventually they dry up so if you catch them before that and put some more electrolyte in there yeah you can reconstitute them I'm not saying they're going to be as good as brand new because these a lot of these have got um, they're called uh, AGM and they've got glass mat between the plates wherein lies the acid but you can top them up so that um, uh, at least they will continue to function so you get that idea let's just zoom down on that there you go see so you can just pop some electrolyte in there like that bit tricky these holes are quite small now going back quite a long time ago I got involved with there were some huge uh, glass mat batteries and we actually got a drill and drilled these out and then used little stoppers so we made a bigger hole so we could deal with uh, what was going on as you can see they're not easy to fill in that way you'd want a smaller um, syringe so that's that and then then we've got this so this is a car battery it's obviously duff <laughs> the ends are bowed out and everything but this is for um, example so don't be afraid of getting fierce this has obviously been outside for a while because some of the plastic is starting to go a bit soft but don't be frightened to get a bit fierce with it all right and I can hear lots of people saying oh you can't do that well I'm doing it so that bit there doesn't want to move It's 
just see if we can get ah, something moved there. Whee! Okay, so we can grip hold of those and uh, you know, if you needed to use this battery because you've got no other choice or you think it's a good one but it's starting to lose the vigour then you can pop the top off if I got some mole grips on there I'd sure I'd better pop that off okay that's just an example and to uh, quote Monty Python here we see the violence inherent in the system okay so let's crack on with this this 6 volts 200 amp hours now there was a point where a while ago I needed just a 1 2 volt cell and I did I know that the middle cell of this is self discharges whereas the outside ones are all right so what you can do and again I hear people go you can't do that well we're doing it yeah, what you do is there's the duff cell there first of all and you just drain the electrolyte out okay you could drill it, but uh, drilling it, it will get in your drill. You could. This is an easier way, so you don't um, contam contaminate any of your power tools. So we'll just get this very weak electrolyte out of here. And I'll get back to you. It's slowing down, but I really want it to drain quite well. So the next thing to do is you can actually see just there and there where the cell wall is between one cell and the next. So what I like to do first of all is cut the top off and we'll use the thin disc on the angle grinder. But um, I won't show you doing that because it's noisy. Or perhaps I will. So with eye protection and ear protection and the face mask. You just keep cutting bits out and there's an aeroplane okay that's that now then oh that's really interesting right let's um, move the camera now then very interesting we knew this was a duff cell and look there it looks like there's a crack in that buzz bar there's just there's no connection between those two bits hopefully you can see that crack before I go messing with it can you see that crack there it certainly looks like there is no connection yeah interesting so all this part of the cell has not been doing anything which is why 
it is duff. So now then, coming back down to this, this side here, which that should be the positive because the terminal over there is the negative then what we can do is we can cut that and then we can zooming out we can cut down here and we have a two volt cell with a positive terminal sticking out of it and we've also identified the problem with this cell it was duff because that was no longer connected so this has been dropped or something yeah something really bad now then accidentally I've just cut into that top there but that's easy enough to repair very easy because you use the old heat the plastic clean it heat the plastic so it's quite warm and slightly floopy and then you um, hot glue it so the hot glue doesn't go onto a cold surface so it does mold into there just depends if that slot has gone all the way in so I'm just going to cut this lot apart chop through there and then we'll have a 2 volt cell so one thing to remember is put your plastic apron on I've talked about this before otherwise you get holes in your clothes so I've cut that through and I turned the cell over to cut the bottom and in doing so I just put these bits of plastic in there like that and that seals it for long enough and now we can just rip this apart you get what I mean then we'll remove all this lot and um, I'll get back to you again okay there we go now I'm not quite sure whether that will bend yeah, or whether you'll need to but you could clean that up like that and weld a tab on there uh, I'll do a, um, a link there to the uh, battery terminal repair video I did only about a month ago something like that let's just see if that'll bend let's grab hold of that there yeah and this here no you see it just snaps that's because it's got not only has it looks like it's already got a fault in it Can you see it was only connected along the top there this bottom bit was already corroded but also this lead has got antinomy or something like that in there and that makes it harder and um, less subject to corrosion by the battery acid but it makes it more brittle and we've just seen it there so what I would do here yeah, is, and I'll just get one, I would clean that up with a file, put that there, but a longer one, so it's actually above the surface of the battery, yeah, and lead weld that on with a carbon rod. And check out that, that uh, link to the carbon lead welding, it's amazing. I went uh, over to Norfolk last week or the week before and helped Lee with his batteries and we took them all out and we lead welded fresh tabs on them. So uh, there you go. So hopefully you've enjoyed this brief period of battery experimenteering. Please click the like button and subscribe if you already haven't and I'd really you know go for the comments any comments as long as they're not abusive or totally negative you already know my policy on comments now so um, catch up with you soon cheers for now